How's it going everyone? This is my blank. Welcome back to my channel and to real life questions with honest answers day. So we're delving into a subject that has both a lot of myth and truth attached to it, CPU bottlenecks. But first, just what is a CPU bottleneck? Strictly speaking, in terms of a system that's running games and is CPU limited, the instance when the term CPU bottleneck is often thrown around is the moment when the processor, a single part therefore, has reached the limit of its processing capabilities and is in turn limiting the capabilities of other parts like the GPU. Why and how this happens I'll get to in a moment right after this message. Wondershare's Video Converter Ultimate is a very fast video converter. Take your favorite holiday clips, apply effects and even edit them in a timeline before choosing from a wide list of video formats that will be encoded using fast GPU acceleration. Download videos from different websites, create DVDs and enjoy extras like VR Video Encode, a GIF maker or an ever handy screen recorder tool. Check out more by visiting the link in the description. Generally speaking, when gaming, the CPU has a lot more things to do than the GPU. It's usually responsible for processing the AI, the game sound, world and game logic, physics, the UI and finally rendering. We've got all these contending for resources on the CPU and if it's not fast enough alongside the RAM which keeps the CPU fed with data, the GPU has to suffer. How? Well, keeping it simple, the CPU and GPU work together to render graphics and they do this through draw calls. Draw calls essentially are a collection of information that are issued by the CPU and tell the GPU about what it should process. Shaders, objects, textures, buffers, etc. Usually this work is demanding for the CPU, otherwise known as expensive. If the CPU is not quick enough, how fast this data is sent to the GPU, so keeping it fed, will hurt performance. It takes CPU cycles and therefore time to prepare this information for each frame you see. If it takes a consistent 16.67 milliseconds, that's 60 FPS, 1000 milliseconds in a second divided by 16.67 milliseconds equals 60 frames. But if the CPU is unable to prepare the frame info as fast as the GPU is able to process them, then the GPU is being bottlenecked by the CPU. All of this also ties in rather nicely with 1% and 0.1% lows, which are the average of the 1% and 0.1% respectively highest times between two successive frames, so lowest frame rates. Things are really complex in reality, but we have a nice primer now and can move on with how you can actually influence a CPU bottleneck. I want to be clear from the get-go, this video is not some miracle worker and there's nothing like an out-of-the-box fast CPU, but not everybody has wads of cash to throw on a processor. For this case study, I've chosen the Pentium G4560 and the Radeon RX 570 combo featured in the ITX build from last week. So this right here is the hardest case study, since this is a locked CPU so no overclocking it and also doesn't support above 2400MHz RAM, unless of course you pair it with a more expensive Z series chipset motherboard. In contrast, something like the upcoming Ryzen 3, still budgety, hopefully, is a much easier case study since it's unlocked so you can overclock it and also supports faster RAM speed. So in essence, if we can make this CPU perform faster, it's going to be much easier on any CPU that allows overclocking it and supports faster RAM speeds. I'm also going to use only one carefully selected game for this, GTA 5. Reasons are that it's very CPU demanding, has lots of system options that you can customize and is extremely popular even now. So let's see what step 1 of 5 detailing what you can do to improve on a CPU bottleneck scenario looks like. Keep your system clean. I think this is one of the more important points here. I keep mine clean, the system I mean, you probably do yours, but trust me when I say that a lot of people keep tons of useless stuff running in the background. In order to reproduce this sad state of a PC, I went ahead and installed every app that Asus says you should use with their motherboard, an antivirus, system temperature monitors, some sort of resource optimizer that I sadly see a lot of people use and I left 6 open tabs in Chrome. This will be our state 0, our starting point. I then benchmarked GTA 5 at 1080p very high settings, not ultra, and here are the results that we got. I then proceeded to uninstalling all the crap, turning off the antivirus while GTA 5 was running and closing all the Chrome tabs. 
And as you can see on this CPU, this actually made a difference. We've got 4 FPS more on average, but the 1% and 0.1% lows jumped by no less than 7 frames on average. I find that when CPU limited 1% and 0.1% suffer the most and lead to bad gaming experiences, so this is a clear leap forward. Increasing the RAM speed or lowering timings. If you try to overclock the GPU, you will get identical results, so don't even bother. It's the CPU we need to make faster and RAM ties in so deep with this that increasing the operating frequency on it or lowering timings or both at the same time so that it's again faster will improve CPU performance. And the first test I used 2133 MHz CL15 RAM, so the cheap and default option. But let's get into the BIOS and try to get this to 2400 MHz, the max a locked 2 series chipset will support. You can find lots of guides on overclocking RAM, but at first I would just try to straight up boot at 2400 MHz without changing anything. Most kits are able to do this with no issue. If not, up the voltage from 1.2V to 1.35V, which is completely safe, and try again. After this, you can work on bringing the CAS latency as low as you can, stably. I recently and easily got a pair of 2133 MHz CL15A data memory to 2400 CL13 just by running 1.35 volts on them. Retesting this, of course, we get another boost in performance here, it's not much but it's there and we definitely see the lows improving. We're already getting much better game feel compared to our zero state, so let's go even further. Overclocking a locked CPU. No, technically you can't do this, and I think only a handful of non-Z motherboards support this, base clock or reference clock overclocking. The reference clock is called reference for a reason, so going above 102-103 MHz can turn the system extremely unstable and can even corrupt data, so don't go overboard with this. The G4560 has a locked multiplier of 35, so 2 3 MHz extra on the BCLK amounts to merely 70-105 MHz. Not a lot, but every little bit helps. I settled on 102.5 MHz, sounds like a radio station, anyway, which made the clock of the G4560 3588-3590 MHz. Retesting with this again gave us 1 FPS more on average and 2-3 FPS to lows. Nothing really special, but if you can do this step, it's okay for a little bit extra that adds up in the end. CPU related game settings. In its option menu, GTA 5 has settings that affect the CPU, like draw distance, population variety, etc. Usually, settings like shadows and everything related to vegetation processing, physics, etc. will affect the CPU much more than the GPU. Of course, this depends on the devs implementing a healthy roster of changeable settings, which is an issue in today's console-driven world. Off the top of my head though, almost all CPU intensive titles I use for testing have something like this. Play with these, they help out a ton. So I lowered the above settings in GTA 5 and retested. Visually the change is minimal, but performance-wise we're already pushing higher averages and lows, so definitely worth it. If all else fails and you still have bad performance, well, I'm sorry, but there's not a lot you can do beyond this point. If you can't properly overclock the CPU and the RAM, you're essentially stuck. Might as well crank up all the eye candy settings, use anti-aliasing options, or even resolution scale modifiers if the game supports it, or run VSR for AMD and DSR for Nvidia. You're not going to lose a lot of frames if you're so CPU limited, so might as well enjoy awesome graphics at the same performance level. I can crank the settings to ultra now and still get well above starting point performance while also getting slightly better visuals. Alright guys and gals, so there you have it, an honest answer to what you can do in a true CPU bottleneck scenario. I really hope this helps some of you out and makes your gaming experience that little bit better. Obviously there is no substitute for a fast CPU, but you can always squeeze the last ounce of performance from your setup before dropping cash on new parts. Well, this was fun for me, and if it was fun for you, I wanna see your comments, questions, and suggestions down below. Check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description, and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.